All right, so this is our last lecture for this week. This is uh, all about metagenomic analysis. Now, at the end of the lecture, uh, hopefully, you'll be able to successfully analyze a metagenome data set using a given computer software. So, uh, what was the what was the history no, of uh, metagenomic analysis? San ba to nanggaling? Bakit suddenly we are using this technique for microorganisms? Okay, humans no are essentially sterile during gestation. No? So during and after birth, everybody, uh, I mean everybody surface. This is your skin, your mouth, your gut will become host to an enormous variety of microorganisms. So, you can include their bacteria, archaea, fungi, or even viruses. So, in normal circumstances, these microorganisms help us to digest our food, uh, helps maintain our immune system. No? However, during this function, no? it can lead to inflammatory bowel diseases or even antibiotic-resistant infections. No? So, uh, the, it is very important to know no, the microbiome numbers and uh, it has been successfully decoded by the uh, uh, Human Microbiome Project no? to uh, to provide us what are the organisms per system or per, or per organ system of the human body. So the community formed by this complement of cells is called the human microbiome. No? So it contains almost 10 times as many cells are in the rest of our bodies. And it accounts for several pounds of your body weight. You know? So there are more genes than are contained in the human genome that are microorganisms. So they say that we are just 46% human cells and more than 50% microbial cells. Previously, there is the culture-dependent approach. You know? So... So this is detected by plating samples on specialized media. Okay, so this is selective for the growth of that organism. No, so you can study the morphology. You can check out whether it's growing on a different kind of media. You can check out the metabolic production or consumption. No, so it is necessary to grow an organism in the laboratory when you use this particular approach. So, this approach is limited only no, in the range of organisms that could be detected to those that would actively grow in a lab culture. No? So, if there will be no available culture media for a certain microorganism, hindi mo siya mag-grow at hindi mo magagamit ang culture-dependent approach. Okay? So, is, this led the close study of easily grown non-familiar model organisms such as E. coli. So, so normally, kapag nag-isolate ka, may mga uh, organisms na sila yung palagi nandyan. Yan, e. coli, you have bacillus, you have your staph, you have your pseudomonas, and some of the fungi like your aspergillus, your penicillium, etc. No? So, uh, using the culture-dependent approach, you can still distinguish many broad clads of bacteria, but the limitations will be uh, it it will be non-specific at lower taxonomic levels. No? So, kumbaga, limited ka. Okay? Kaya nagkaroon ng culture-independent approach. No? This is to address the vast majority of microbial species that have never been grown in the laboratory. Okay? So, studying and quantifying the uncultured were severely limited. No? So, Kung 1% lang ang uh, nag-grow in the laboratory, no? so malaki na yung 10%, ang laki pa ng percentage that you need to study. No? So the culture-independent approach helps analyze the DNA no? extracted directly from a sample rather than from an individually cultured microbe. So, in this way, no, it allows us to investigate several aspects of microbial communities. 
Also, you can describe taxonomic diversity. Ibig sabihin, sino yung mga mikrobyo na nandun sa iyong community or sa sample mo, no? And also describe the functional metagenomics, which is yung mga biological tasks the members of that community uh, do or carry out. Yung mga specific roles niya in terms of function. Uh, years ago, a uh, culture-independent approach to identify microbes utilized fish. Ito yung uh, fluorescent in situ hybridization. Fish probes can be targeted to almost any level of taxonomy from species to phylum. No? So, although fish was initially limited to the 16S rRNA marker gene and thus to diversity studies, it has since been expanded to functional gene probes that can be used to identify specific enzymes in communities. No? But uh, generally, it remains a primarily low throughput. No? And it is dependent on imaging-based technology. So here is an example of uh, uh, samples that were, uh, that were analyzed using fish. So you get, you get there your mixed population, you fix them, and you hybridize it with a fluorescent probe. After that is you observe under a fluorescent microscope. So you can see the various colors would represent uh, various um, uh, met either metabolic group or various uh, genera. Huh? Okay, so here is a common algorithm of the culture-independent approach and now referred to as the next generation sequencing. No? In the next generation sequencing, you can identify uh, the microbial community no, in terms of the genome, the transcriptome, the proteome, and the metabolome. No? Of course, the genome will represent your DNA, your transcriptome, whether the RNA is expressed, the proteome, whether the proteins are produced, no? and of course, the metabolome will give you the right metabolites to describe the phenotype or the function of the members of your microbial community. No? So using your sample no, uh, and performing next generation sequencing will not only tell you who the microorganisms are, but also tell you the roles of those microorganisms play in the community. So in the next generation sequencing, this is this uh, took off from the Sanger sequencing. No? Yung Sanger sequencing, uh, it, it also utilizes the, the base pairing that was taught uh, in genetics. No? Um, and the ang advantage lang ng next generation sequencing is that you can construct a sequence library. So in this way, clonal amplification can be generated um, it is more robust or mas marami kang ma-analyze or mas sequence in a short period of time. So NGS is similar to Sanger in that you sequence your DNA fragments. No? However, in NGS, it will be massively parallel. So it would allow millions of fragments to be sequenced in a single run versus your Sanger sequencing. It can only produce about a forward and a reverse read. So, so yung uh, Sanger sequencing, uh, it would uh, probably last a day or two for you to sequence na kaya ng NGS for about an hour. So, as it is impractical to fully sequence every genome in every cell, microbial ecology has defined a number of molecular markers that more or less uniquely can tag distinct genomes. No, pag sinabi mong marker, this is a DNA sequence that would identify the genome that contains it without the need to sequence the entire genome. The marker would also be present in every member of the population. So it's conserved, and it should differ only and always between individuals with distinct genomes. Okay, so it, it is uh, 
conserved. However, there are certain parts that would allow you to still differentiate between individuals. No? And then it will differ proportionally to the evolutionary distance between distinct genomes. And thus, the marker that is utilized will, is the 16S ribosomal RNA subunit gene. So this is the map of your rRNA gene. And it, uh, you can see here that it has uh, the V regions or the variable regions. And then, of course, there are the conserved regions as well. Okay, So in some publications, they utilize the full length. That means V1 to V9 of your 16S rRNA gene. But in some publications, they just utilize certain segments of the gene. For instance, V1 to V3 or V3 to V4, V3 to V5, V4 or V6 to V9. It doesn't matter, no? Because uh, it, the, it is a marker, it would work well for the identification of the whole genome in that that is present in the community. So, uh, nakita nyo dyan are some of the products or machines that could run uh, next generation sequencing that would be Roche 454, the MySeq, and the HiSeq. Of course, there are other uh, there are other uh, advanced machines right now. So, what is binning? Meaning, uh, sinabi mong binning, ito na yung ina-identify mo na, no? Sino uh, or ano yung mga sequences na yon. So, when you, when you identify the sequences and tag them into OTUs or operational taxonomic units, ang tawag doon ay binning. So, binning allows a community to be analyzed in terms of discrete bins or OTUs. And computationally, they can be tractable representations for biological analysis. So if you are going to study taxonomy or the systematics of your samples, you can make measures or some degree of sequence divergence. Like for instance, kapag 99%, they are similar in terms of species level. 97%, they are similar sa genus level. And 95%, Onwards, no? So, if each OTU is treated as a distinct category or each 16S sequence is bent into a named phylum or other taxonomic category, a pool of microbiome sequences can be represented as a histogram of bin counts. So, so pwede mong i-represent yun as graphs like this one. And then also, in addition to that, you can present diversity measures like alpha diversity, ito na yung mga richness nyo, no? um, abundance, and so forth, or the beta diversity, meaning you are trying to connect it with other metadata like your ano yung influence ng pH, ano yung influence ng, ng temperature, ano yung influence ng climate, and so many others. No? So, don't worry, this is not done mano mano. There are computer softwares that are that make all this data analysis possible. In the culture independent approach, there are two types of work. No? The wet lab and the dry lab. No? So the wet lab is being done by microbiologists, molecular biologists, or tinatawag nila na applied biologists. And then the dry lab will be conducted by your bioinformatician, the statistician, or the computer scientist, or the data scientist. So, so nowadays, uh, this particular group of people are working together to understand uh, next generation sequencing and to explain no, or profile various microbial diversity environments. No? So if you'll be to choose which one do you like, would you rather be a dry lab scientist or a wet lab scientist? No? So it's uh, up to you whether you like to stay inside the lab or you, st you would like to be in front of your computer all the time. So let me share uh, some of the experiences of UP Manila people. These are students of uh, UP Manila no? uh, that uh, have tried uh, the 
culture independent approach no so ito yung kanilang mga publications some of them have uh, tried to study no the bacterial diversity ng uh, oral microbiota both uh, yung may caries or caries free both for young and for adults no some groups have also compared uh, the environment uh, from Taal, no, uh, aquaculture site versus non-aquaculture site in terms of bacterial community and fungal community. And then, of course, uh, uh, one MS student have also tried to use uh, the culture-independent approach to study uh, burung mustasa. No? So, ano yung mga microorganisms na present from day zero until the last day of fermentation using a culture independent approach so another one is this uh, the dust microbiome team so this is a uh, bs bio students i think now they are already uh, studying for their uh, exam the ple this coming year and then the, ito yung isa sa kanilang uh, publications already out. And they are now uh, preparing the next set of uh, bacterial data. Then I also worked with uh, uh, some people here in uh, Korea and we tried uh, to use the next generation sequencing so we could model the microbial communities of uh, swine because you know swine is a good model to understand physiology or gut physiology for more specific no uh, as model for humans no so uh, we have produced uh, quite a number of publications uh, for this particular analysis and the right now, currently, you know, we have biology seniors. They are now working with Carsporus soil genome and resistome. So they are going to study the taxonomy and they're also uh, going to study the antimicrobial resistance genes found in karst forest. So this is one example of a karst forest no, or limestone forest. This has never been studied. So this is a very important contribution of the University of uh, the Philippines, Manila, and of course the bioseniors. So do you have any questions so far? Again, write them down and feel free to ask them during the synchronous session or please send them to me via our Canvas inbox anytime so what uh, for you to appreciate the uh, metagenomic analysis uh, I have prepared an activity in canvas so this will be a group activity I'll be assigning you into groups and this will be your activity no? so groups will be given sample sequences for submission to Silva Okay, Silva, this is a free software in the internet. So you can, you can work without downloading it. No? Groups will propose a research interest. Example, comparing microbial communities between socks when you rinse it in the morning or socks when you rinse it in the evening. No? So something like that. You can think of a more witty topic as long as you'll be comparing two communities. Okay? And then the groups will try to interpret the results generated by Silva NGS based on their proposed research problem and prepare a presentation. So what would you be interpreting? You can interpret the rarefaction curve. Okay, As you analyze it, this will tell you whether your samples are enough. No? Kapag nakikita nyo na ganyan, nag uh, towards uh, pagpa-plateau, that means your samples are enough. Pero kung increasing pa siya, ibig sabihin nun, you need more samples. Another one to interpret will be your OTU distribution who are in there. No? So that will be, that will represent your taxonomic fingerprint uh, in OTUs and sequences and in terms of numbers. No? And then what to interpret again, you can also use Krona plots. You can describe the phyla or you can describe further like class, the order, the family, or even here, no, the genus up to the species level. 
Okay. So how to do it? Okay, so first you have to meet with your groups and decide on a research problem. And then you'll be given, you, you, you have to access the sample sequences from the teacher. Okay, you can modify the label of the data. Say morning socks, evening socks. No? And then go to the Silva NGS website. It looks like this. You have to visit https uh, colon double slash ngs.arb-silva.de uh, uh, and register for an account, okay? So you just have to register one account per group, no? Unless you want to practice at home, you can create an account individually, okay? So you should use an email address that you can easily access because they will send the results of the analysis there so you just have to copy and paste the sequence that i will be giving you copy paste lang or legal ngayon tayo mag copy paste and then uh, they will give you the results through your email okay so first go to silva and then register here you have to put there your email and your password then you have to complete your registration you must fill out uh, the boxes when you see the ast the red asterisk there, okay? So for the license, you just choose academic so that we'll have more storage or more data storage. And then log in to your account using the credentials you use to register. Once you are in the interface, you just click create project, okay? And then project name, uh, you, you can, uh, you can uh, choose the project name, example, socks, okay? And then the sequence type, put there 16S, 18S, SSU. For the sequence technology, key in Roche 454. For the expected sequence quantity, you just key in 30,000. And then expected read length 400. Those are the standards, no? So, and then you can just click create project. And then an email will be sent to you once uh, for instructions. And then you just have to wait for your results. So sometimes the results can come after an hour or two, but sometimes it, uh, if the internet is so slow, it would come the next day. What will you see? Silva will give you this kind of an uh, results, okay? So an email will be given to you and a link will be there. That link will be valid for 24 hours. It serves as a shortcut. However, you can lo always log into your account and then click my projects to see your results, okay? So your results will be something like this. Quite a number of graphs to see. Pero ang kailangan malang tignan dyan will be a rare faction curve or you could click in your open report PDF and all of the data will be there. No? So you can, you can uh, of course, uh, analyze and make stories out of the graphs based on the given results to you. And then analyze using the primer file uh, I gave you to you previously along with the lecture PDF in the Google, in, in the in the canvas, no, in canvas, okay? Yeah, so uh, you can analyze your members of the species using your chronoplot, just click the chronoplot, no? Uh, and then after that, manipulate the depth until you reach the species level. So it will always start with phyla, and then uh, it will go ahead and go to the next depth until eventually you will have your maximum depth and then it will give you genus or other species. Take note that it will not just show you the members of the organism there, but it will also give you the measure or how many sila doon. No? Like 90% will be more silasi, etc. Okay? Okay, so I think that would be it. Uh, if you have questions about this activity, please feel free to tell me. Okay, uh, I will have longer uh, uh, due date for this activity because this is kind of tricky. So you can you can do it uh, uh, at your own pacing. No, so so the activity will all be sent to Canvas. If you have again any questions about the principles or the theories, do drop them. 
uh, during the synchronous session or send them to me via our inbox anytime. Okay, so this will be the last lecture for this week. Thank you very much.